The NBA draft is coming. Who is going where? What does Greg Doyle have to say about it? That right now. Welcome to the show. This is Doyle Rules. Lauren Shahadi, Greg Doyle, our national columnist. Greg, the NBA draft tomorrow. When you look at the list of number one picks over the last 10 years, with the exception of LeBron, Dwight Howard, a lot of these, these athletes haven't lived up to the hype. So my question is, what does that mean for Blake Griffin? I don't know, but it scares me for Blake Griffin because I really like that guy. He's, he's impossible not to like on every level. I mean, he seems humble enough despite being so good. He's fun to watch. He's, he's everything you want a basketball player to be. And yet, if he's going number one overall, that tells me he's going to bomb because that's just what happens to one picks. Unless your name is LeBron or Howard or maybe Yao Ming, you typically aren't nearly as good as we thought you were going to be, and I hope that doesn't happen to Blake Griffin, but now I'm scared. He's been able to single-handedly take his team so far. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Let me ask you overall the draft. How does the draft class look? Really, really bad. Blake Griffin <laughs> is a really good really number feel. one overall pick. And if, he, if this were last year and, and this same player, as good as he was this year in college, was going to get picked, and, and it was between him and O.J. Mayo and – you know, and, and Greg Oden in the past, and, and guys like Derrick Rose, you know, he, he's right up there with all those guys as, as a number one pick on paper. So I like him at one. That's great. But whoever's two, I don't like, and, and it only gets worse. And for me, the highlight of it, and I love Stephen Curry, so this is going to sound like I don't like him, but I do. I, I like him. I like his game. I like everything about him. But he's being talked about as a top five pick. And if Stephen Curry, and he probably will be, if Stephen Curry is a top five pick, you're, you're not a very good draft because as good as I, I think he'll be in the NBA, he's not – that kind of player, I don't think. You're kind of depressing today, by the way. As opposed to most other days? No, when, really. when I'm all balloons and seashells? All right, Greg, let's focus. Some teams already moving. The Spurs get Richard Jefferson. The Wiz get Randy Foy and Mike Miller. Who's making out on these trades so far? Oh, the Spurs. Holy cow. Th th that is the latest edition of the Pau Gasol trade where one team gets a difference maker. The Spurs got Richard Jefferson and gave away nothing. Gave away a bunch of spare parts and the lint that was in their pocket and some, some pocket change. And they got Richard Jefferson, kind of like the Lakers. I don't even know who the Lakers gave away. It was Two years later, it really doesn't matter. They gave away nothing and nobody to get Pau Gasol, who delivered them a championship or helped deliver that. So the Spurs just got a whole lot better. And hopefully the Wizards did too. They need to get out from the cellar, huh? Yeah, you know, they've had some nice pieces. Gilbert Arenas, Jameson, Karam Butler, they've had some nice pieces. Maybe what they don't need are more players, but a better coach. I just can't put it all together. You know, I hate asking you questions that I already know the answer to, but this is going to be one of those. Kevin O'Neill, you've been killing him back in the Pac-10. You've been killing USC. You've been killing him. Why? Well, he's atrocious. I mean, he's, he's actually an X and O guy pretty good. He, he can draw up a play and all that. As, as far as coaching ability goes, he has that. No one says he doesn't. But he's just a miserable human being. People don't like him. Um, and actually, more to the point, people hate him. And now he's going to go to Southern Cal, which it's hard to recruit Southern Cal. It really is. You're, you know, you're competing in the same city with UCLA. You don't have a whole lot of tradition. It's not easy. Tim Floyd could sell his down-home folksy personality, I guess. I don't know what Kevin O'Neill's going to sell because it's not going to be himself because he's miserable and he's not going to sell uh, tradition. I, I don't know how that's going to work out for them. Kevin O'Neill is a, is, a, is a mean guy. And turning over your program that needs all the help it can get to a mean guy, why not go hire Henry Bibby? He was available. You don't care that he has Pac-10 experience. That doesn't matter to you at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, his Pac-10 experience is, run, is helping to run Arizona into the ground and being so bad at Arizona. He, that job was his. He was the next Lute Olson. They hired him not just to, in an emergency, we want you to replace Lute if, if he gets sick, but when the day comes where Lute steps down, you are the next coach at Arizona. And after one year at Arizona, he was so miserable as a human being that everybody said, uh, we were wrong about you, Kevin. You, you can't be the coach here. Get out. That's how bad he is as a guy, that he lost that job on the basis of his personality. That's who Southern Cal hired. Well done, Trojans. More movement going on. Donald Fear as head of the MLB Players Association. You go back to 94. A lot of people didn't like him. He's now out. Do you like him? Well, he's a, a brilliant union leader. I mean, he was, he's about the best union leader I've ever seen. I, I wasn't around for Jimmy Hoffa, and Jimmy Hoffa didn't turn out really good for him, but maybe he was a good union leader when he was alive. I don't know. But Fear's really good at his job. My problem with Donald Fear is he was so good at his job, he got player salaries to escalate so much and so rapidly that, first of all, football and basketball followed suit. They took one look at baseball and said, we should make that kind of money too. They got the kind of money baseball players got. And the problem is all that trickle-down economics trickle down into my pocket and yours and everybody else because 
how do we how do owners pay for all these guys making ten million dollars a year? They pay for them by jacking up prices of tickets and beer and hot dogs and also cable rights fees. Well who pays for all that stuff? We do. Even cable rights fees like I don't go to baseball games very often, so I'm not really paying for the beer, but my cable bill's pretty high. Well why is that? In part because the baseball networks are charging a ton to pay for their Alex Rodriguez. You're a peach today, aren't you, Greg? I'm just miserable for the most part, but I, my problem is the glass is half full and or some people it's half empty to me and, and cracking and leaking, and I'm just pointing out what I see. At least you admit it. It is time to go. For Greg Doyle, I'm Lauren Shahadi. Thanks for watching, everyone.